Welcome, beloveds. I'm so happy to see you in the chat and taking care of one another and joys and concerns. I want to welcome you to this in gathering service in gathering is a time of welcome and renewal of our covenant and faith. And so this service is echoed throughout Unitarian Universalism. Uh, sometimes it's uh, joined by a water communion, sometimes it's called other things. Um, but tonight we welcome each other to in gathering. So I want us all to um, to take a moment, to take a moment and think about the time, a time when you felt the most welcome. You can close your eyes or you can not, or you can look off to the side, whatever helps you envision this. It could have been a moment when you were at home, at someone else's home. It could have been at school. Maybe it was at work, a doctor's office. Maybe it was while you were traveling. Maybe it was somewhere that you'd never been before and yet still felt, made you feel the most welcome you've ever felt. I want you to take a moment and remember that feeling. What did it feel like? What did you hear? What smells did you have? Um, what did you see? What colors? What textures? What did you taste? Maybe it was a meal, maybe it was a snack. Was it somewhere new? Or was it somewhere so familiar? How did you get there? How did you get to that place? What movements made that possible? How did you know that you were welcome? How did it feel safe? Or did it feel slightly uncomfortable and yet still welcome? Maybe you were very uncomfortable, but you knew that this was the place that you needed to be and were welcomed at. Or maybe it was all of those things. Sit with that for a minute. Mm. How does it feel? Remember. As we take part in this spiritual practice of ingathering, we want to think about the ways in which welcome is both invited, the idea of being welcomed is also is something that's both invited and accepted, right? We have to give an invitation to welcome and we have to recept, receive that invitation. And in receiving that invitation, what agreements or what, what do we understand our responsibilities around that? As Unitarian Universalists, we gather in this early fall, often, as I said, what we call in gathering. Sometimes other faiths, they call it homecoming. Over the years, it's become some kind of back from summer vacation ritual in Unitarian Universalism. But in truth, its roots are much deeper. They are set in some of the homecoming church traditions from our not so distant Christian past. It is a time of intentionality, of reaching out to one another, not just to welcome back, but to ensure our community is prepared for what is to come forward. At one point in time, that meant the winter season to come forward. In some of our indigenous cultures, it's a time to prepare for the bounty of harvest and for the trials that winter will bring. It's time to take stock of that which must be done immediately and that which can be put aside to be accomplished during the long evenings of winter. Elsewhere in our CLF world, we might expect this time frame to be reversed as the seasons 
present differently in the different hemispheres, right? And yet the lessons from ingathering are universal. Invitation, welcome, rejoice, taking stock, planning for change. In this, there's an implicit understanding that things don't remain constant, right? If we're planning for change, we're acknowledging implicitly that things do not remain the same always. That as a people, we must adapt to new environments, new generations, new ways of being together. In the homecoming tradition, the invitation was not necessarily to new people. That was always a given that we get that invitation to new people. It's 365 days a year. No, the homecoming tradition was specifically to those who had had a previous relationship with the church. To take a particular time of year to check in on them, to welcome them back, to let them know they were not forgotten, that there was indeed a community that still was for and with and by them and knew them and wanted to know them. So there's an expectation that not everybody would continue with the community, right? In the same way that if we expect change, we know that there's no constant. In this case, if we're having a homecoming, there's an expectation that not everybody is with us, right? Not everybody is here at home, that people may want to return. Be it a change of location or perhaps even a change of spiritual development, we understood that while everyone was saved in the Christian understanding of it, not everyone would come with us on this journey. We set boundaries for what was acceptable, and we had an intentional check-in time for those who had chosen to move in a different direction. Again, this purpose was not to save them. It wasn't to, to try and, and, and save their souls. We had already agreed on their inherent worth and dignity, but it was to let them know that our community remained a welcoming place if they could covenant within those boundaries. Now, much can be said about the pros and cons of what those boundaries were in the Christian, early Christian faith, and, and in truth, in many faiths. Some were beneficial and some were harmful. But what can be said is that they have evolved as we knew and learned better, we did better. As our spiritual development as Unitarian Universalists has evolved and we know better, our boundaries have changed. In a phrase, we have widened the circle. However, that widening is not always without, is not always without fraught losses. We have and will continue to lose people who cannot abide no longer being at the center. Recently, a colleague, a Unitarian Universalist colleague of mine, the Reverend Sarah Skotchko, has articulated what it means as a congregation to have boundaries, which mean we will be expected at times to say goodbye. I encourage you all to read her article. It articulates from a place of privilege what many Black, Indigenous, people of color, Unitarian Universalists have said over and over again. That if Unitarian Universalism is to thrive, we must be able to widen the circle and we will lose people in the process. But what we will gain is beloved community. There are those, as we widen, 
that we will gain. Some Unitarian Universalists will thrive in this widening. We will mix and mingle and learn from this intentional liberation. We will try and fail and we will try again. We will embrace healthy conflict as a means of liberation. We will work harder to notice all of the black and brown faces that we lose leaving out the back doors of our congregations just as much as we lament those white faces that are taking their toys and their tithes and storming out our front doors. And make no mistake, there are those who will feel threatened and alone in not wanting things to change. And our response, our spiritual mandate, it's not to cease the widening of that circle. Our spiritual mandate is to continue to welcome, rejoice, take stock, and plan for change. I've often said that we will not stop this ship. We are headed towards liberation. We cannot stop and wait for everyone to get on board. And we certainly are not going back. But neither should we just chuck people overboard, right? That's not what we're here. That's not what we're about. What we want to do is create loving lifeboats filled with all the resources needed for learning, growth, and liberation. So much so that folks can spend a lifetime in those lifeboats if they so choose. We hope not. We hope they will take those materials and develop spiritual practices which lead to growth. We hope and pray that our friends and family will see that there is already enough. There's enough for everyone to have everything we need for heaven here on earth. And we will intentionally create community in which folks can be lovingly welcomed back in to covenantal boundaries when and if they are ready. But what will not happen, what we cannot allow is for the ship to drop anchor and wait for everyone to get on board. As a youth and young adult, I often heard this phrase from my elders in movement. They would say to me when I would get too worked up, they would say to me, Christina, this is generational work. And that phrase, friends, it used to piss me off. I would get really mad. And, and I couldn't always figure out why, right? I respected them, but damn it, that phrase made me hot. And it wasn't until I had children that I realized why. It's because I feel that phrase is in some ways um, a cop out. It releases us from our urgency. It releases us from our duty to our children. It released those elders from their duty to me because I'm not willing to sacrifice one more generation. I am not willing to tell my children that they must wait for their freedom while somebody takes their time getting on the boat. To be sure, it has become generational work, but this is not a reason why we should not keep a sense of urgency to our mission. It is not a reason why we should drop anchor. We must keep moving forward towards liberation. We cannot wait. Our spiritual mandate says that this is the only non-changing part of us as Unitarian Universalists. And it is our obligation and our joy to get us all free. Amen. Ashe and blessed be.